Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Tuesday. This is the Crafty Cottage. Today we are going to be doing another crafting experiment and I'm so so excited for it. Today we are going to be taking this crown royal box that I was gifted and we're going to be turning it into a journal and I'm very excited about it. So if you're excited too, let's go ahead and get started. Today is actually quite a bit of a lazy day. I did not fix my hair. I am still in my pajama pants because it is cozy, it is chilly, and I'm very excited for the fall weather, so I am going all in and I am being lazy today, uh, mostly just with my outfit until I have to go to physical therapy later. So like I said, we are going to be making a journal out of a small box. And what is cool about this is I'm actually going to be making a one signature journal, so it's going to be small, um, not very big. I'm very excited to experiment and see if I can get this to work the way I am planning it in my head. So let's go ahead and get into this video. For my drink today, I have it in my cute little Earthbound mug. I actually don't have tea today. Yesterday I went to the store and I got a variety pack of different coffees um, and it actually had French vanilla cappuccino in it. So that is actually what I'm drinking today is French vanilla cappuccino instead of tea because I just wanted to try it. And for today's candle, um, I'm doing Champagne Toast by Bath & Body Works. This was just on my table, so it's what we're going with today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and light our candles and get into this video. Alright, so if you are going to be crafting with me today, then I'm going to show you all the stuff that you're going to need today. Um, obviously, your box. Um, I am using this Crown Royal Apple box because it is very pretty. Um, it's a good, you can't really see it, but it's a good thickness. Um, for a journal cover, so I figured it would be cool just to use this as the journal cover. Um, I really like the green. Um, this was gifted to me by a person. Um, so I'm going to use this. And then we're also going to need craft knife, needles, glue, pencil, rulers markers, pens, your pokey tool, clips or paper clips, tape, and today I think I'm going to be rounding the corners of my journal, so a corner rounder punch thing. I'm sure I didn't mention everything that you're going to need. For example, I completely forgot paper. Um, today we're actually going to be using dyed paper instead of regular coffee paper, copy paper. If you watched my last journaling video, um, if not, it's linked down in the description for you. Um, but yeah, we're going to be using some dyed paper today, either coffee or avocado. I can't decide which yet, um, but paper is important for a journal. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to actually open my box all the way. There is, I can't really see that. There's the piece right there. I'm going to be really delicate because this is actually important to um, the journal, connecting the journal. Because like I said, we're only doing a single signature today. Um, so this is, it truly is an experiment. Um, I tried to look it up on YouTube to see if anybody else had done anything like this and I could not find anything. So let's hope that this goes well. All right, come on. All right, all right, so now our box is open. Um, this is going to be our cover, this piece. Um, and we need this piece for the back cover. So what we're gonna do is just cut these off, which I'm gonna save these and maybe use them for a spine on something else. Um, and then we're also gonna cut off like the tabbies. Um, but we're gonna keep this tab that just connected the box. We're gonna keep that. So I need my cut 
cutting mat board. I need my ruler. Okay, so we're going to cut this piece off. And this box is a little thicker than the chipboard that I was using in my last journaling video. Um, so we'll see, because you can, you can kind of see, let me zoom in a little bit. You can kind of see, like, that is pretty thick for a box, so. Alright, so then we're going to cut this piece off. I think that my ruler slipped a little. Okay, so we need to keep that piece, not throw in our candle. <clears throat> Cut this piece off. Some pieces of this are taking two swipes to get. Um, free, but all right. So now we're gonna cut. Remember, we're keeping this tiny tab, but we're gonna cut this one off, and then we're gonna cut off the the ones on this piece. Since I had to cut a little extra piece off, um, I made a mark for where I'm gonna have to cut on the other one because it's gonna be a little shorter than originally intended. All right. So we're cutting this part off, making sure it's straight, make sure you align your ruler correctly. This is the most stressful part. All right. There's one. Alright. And then, I don't know if you can see this, but there's like this little lip here. I'm actually going to cut that off because that's going to be the outside, like where it flaps open. Um, so I'm going to cut that off. Because it's, I don't like it being there. Alright, there is the front cover and the back cover. Alright. So that part is done. I'm going to throw these pieces away, but I'm going to keep these pieces for a later spine on something else. Okay, now I'm going to sit down. Alright, so the reason we kept this little tabby piece is because I'm going to use that to connect our front cover back. Like that. So, I have yet to go get, let me get a piece of paper for a I have yet to go get um, glue, the good glue that Pam has. I have yet to go get it. I have it in my cart in Hobby Lobby, but I have yet to go get it. So, the glues that I got out were Elmer's and Elmer's, but uh, white glue and then a craft bond glue. I'm trying to decide which one would be better. This one has a longer drying time. I think this one will stick better. So I'm gonna do this one and we're just gonna glue this whole strip right here.
Okay. Y'all are kind of far away. Let's get up. Oh. Alright, so I am going to smoosh the glue around just to make sure. And I'm going to try to keep as little glue on this part as possible because this is our cover. Like, I'm not going to be covering it up with anything. So I want to make sure I keep that piece clean. Okay. And again, I did not get a baby wipe. seen where other journal makers will let their glue dry for a minute to give it like to let it get tacky so while I'm moving stuff around it'll give it a minute to get tacky I just don't want I'm folding this up because I don't want that glue that I just got on there to get on the piece that I'm fixing to put on it okay so can you see so all I'm gonna do is put this on here and try to align it as best as I can. Trying to make sure my head's not in the shot. Make sure we're evenly spaced on, or like correctly aligned on both sides because it keeps moving. The awesome thing about this Elmer's glue is you have enough time to move it around if it moved. Alright. So I am just smushing, making sure it is good and secure and grabbing like I said this is going to take a longer time to dry so if you used a glue like this now would be a great time to go get a snack or something um, and just leave it alone until it dries I am back and forth I grabbed my clear tape you can zoom out now I guess I grabbed my clear tape um, because I'm back and forth on putting a strip on here, on the inside, just to make sure that it's good and secure. Um, I think I am going to do that. I have to find the end. There it is. So as best as I can, I'm going to line it up. Well, I cut it too short, but that's okay. And this is just going to create extra um, security on that staying together. Okay. So now there is our cover. And there's still this piece, it's kind of, can you see that, it's, you can see where it's attached. I'm gonna try to figure something out with that, but it's not really a big deal right now. Um, but there's our cover. I am going to go do something else for a little while so I don't mess with this and mess it up while it's drying. So I'm going to leave this here, let it dry, um, and I will be right back. Okay, so. I have let this dry for a little while, plus we also have our tape that is um, holding that bondage together. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. Um, here is our cover. Our cover. Okay. And it is hanging over a little bit, so I will cut that down. <coughs>
Sorry, I realized I wasn't talking. Um, so I'm just cutting this piece off, and like I said, it has been taking one or two swipes to get the piece all the way off because this is such thick um, cardboard. So there is that. All right. Oh, I think I just got my head in that. Sorry. So. Next, we're going to be making our signatures, um, but while um, this was drying, I went ahead and looked at my um, embroidery thread to decide what color I wanted, so I flipped it over, and I picked out a couple greens that I thought would be cool, and then I also picked out a couple yellows that I thought would be cool, because they've got this little yellow, so I figured... Um, a yellow would be a cool accent for it. Um, so I am trying to decide between these four colors right here. Um, so I'm going to set these off to the side while we put our signatures together. Um, and we'll go back to that. I am also going to set this to the side because we do not need it to make our signatures. Um, so like I said, we're going to be using a dyed paper today. And I haven't quite decided between avocado and coffee dyed so that's cool looking all right let me figure out what papers I'm going to use and I will be right back all right so I have decided to go with the coffee dyed paper and I actually need to coffee dye some more paper because this is about the end of um my coffee dyed paper. Um, so what I'm going to do is just fold all the pieces in half and if it doesn't quite match up like that didn't um, that's okay because we're going to have to trim it because it's bigger than our cover. We are going to be trimming it to where it fits very snug into um, into our cover. I'm going to be cutting it slightly smaller than our cover, um, which I realize I did not even measure that for you guys. Um, I'll measure it in just a second after I finish folding these pages. Um, I actually today am in the process of tea dyeing some paper and then I also decided to experiment with dyeing some paper with um, red onion skins and that was a shock to me I did not realize what color red onions turned paper um, for anyone that's curious it's it's yellow red onion turns paper yellow so that was shocking. They are still soaking. I like to let my paper soak in the mixtures for at least overnight, maybe 24-ish hours. Um, but I am off work today and off work tomorrow, so I'm going to actually leave that sitting until tomorrow and I'm going to do something with it tomorrow. And I think tomorrow I am also going to be... Um, that's cool. I am also going to be doing, making some handmade, like homemade paper, um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I have 15 sheets, look how cool that looks. I have 15 sheets of paper here, I'm actually going to fold them and then stick them all together and see if I need to uh, take some out. Uh, but the last junk journal, nope, not a junk journal. The last journal I made, um, I used 10 sheets in my signature. Um, so for this one, I just wanted to use um, maybe a little more. I'm going to put them together and see how it looks. Um, so I'm just going to stick my papers in here. And these are all different sizes, um, not by much, but they are different, so 
But then again, I am going to be um, cutting them to fit inside the journal. Come on. trying to place these um, to where they are uh, there's a little variety in each page okay so we're gonna do our best to show these all the way back together okay so there is what our proposed signature is going to look like um, I'm just going to stick it in here and see if I like that thickness. And I kind of do. Um, like I said, we're going to have to trim this um, to fit, the pages to fit. But thickness-wise, I like that. I like how thick it is. I probably could also go and do 20, um, but I don't want to push it. Um, so that's what the other side looks like. So I'm gonna do 15. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and cut these down to size. Trying to get it to go all the way down so that I measure correctly. Okay. I say measure, I'm not actually measuring. I am sticking the paper in and I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm just gonna draw, I'm gonna trace the book cover in pencil. Okay. So then what I'm gonna do is I have the outline of the cover on there. Can you see that? Okay, we're gonna get my little cutting board and first things first, we're gonna clip these all together so that nobody moves. I'm trying to figure out the best way to clip it since um, I'm going to be cutting all the edges. Alright. Alright, so we've got it clipped. It's all back in there. And this is where we're going to be cutting. So I've got my ruler. I'm really hoping these don't move. Okay. Let's zoom in so we can see a little better. <clears throat> so I've got my ruler, I just need to go in, okay, I'm going to put our ruler down, and we're going to be very, very careful with this, okay, so I traced this on here, so instead of lining up with this line that I just drew, we're actually going to go inside it. So we're still gonna make sure that we're lined up correctly, but we're gonna go like quarter of an inch inside the line because I want these to fit inside and the cover to be all like around the outside. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to hold our ruler very steady because we're going we're gonna have to cut through a lot of pieces. So we're gonna just go ahead and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut are we all detached yes all right so there is one side and they are nice and straight 
Alright, I'm actually... It's going to be a little difficult. Okay. So now we're going to do this side. Can you see? You cannot see. Okay, so here's my line right here. We're going to go just a little in so that they all fit about there. And we're going to be very firm on our pressure on our ruler. And then we're just going to cut and cut and cut and cut and keep cutting till we have a release. Are we released? Nope, not yet. Are we released? What isn't releasing? Right there. It is released. Not the back page. Okay. Then there we go. There is the back. Now we just have this part, and again, we're going to go a little bit further in, and this tear right here, where is that? No. That tear is going to be in there a little bit, and that's okay. It's not going to bother me too bad, but again, we're just going to go... Um, quarter of an inch-ish um, from the line on the inside. That way we're good. And inside the journal. So, again, cut. Making sure we are firm pressure on the ruler. Making sure it does not slip. Cut. And you can move the extra pieces out of the way. Cutting. Cut. Good pressure. Moving the extras out of the way. What am I running into when I do that? Alright. I don't know what's happening up here and why it's doing that. I'm just going to cut that little piece off. Retracting craft knife. Alright, so then we have all these scraps off to the side. And we have our signature. Well, we still have to like put it together. But we have this part. I'm going to come back out and I can sit back down because we are done cutting. Alright, so here is our little group of papers. Gonna take these off. And they fit snugly in there. Alright. So now we're gonna take this back out. Um. Alright, so I'm half forgot what we're doing. Um, where is the middle? There's the middle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is make sure that these are all snugly where they go. And I'm going to put a clippy on this side on the top. And then I'm going to put a clippy on the other side. On this side. So it's complete opposite. That way they all stay where they're supposed to be. And I'm going to set that off to the side. We're going to grab this. We're going to grab our cover and our ruler. This journal is five and like an eighth by about eight inches. So we're gonna say five by eight. 
because <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that would be what similar to what our signature just came out as. So the signet the journal is roughly five by eight, and our signature is four and three quarters by seven and a half. Um, so what we're going to do is we see how it fits in here. We want it to be you're not in front. We want it to be as in the middle of this as possible. So what I'm gonna do is take my pencil and make a mark here. And I'm gonna make a mark. here I'm actually going to bring this mark down just a tiny smidge okay and then if you haven't watched my other video um, oh, you can't even see where those marks are one mark is there and one mark is there uh, if you haven't watched my other video, I use the same technique that Pam from the Paper Outpo Outpost does um, to tell where the top is. And so we have one mark here, one mark here. Instead of going straight in the middle, we'll go to the middle and then we'll go just a little bit up. That way these dots are closer than these dots and we can always tell where the top is. That actually helps more when you have more than one signature, but I'm just doing one signature. But I'm still going to... Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, we'll just do this one in the middle right there. So we have our, can you see? We have our dots on our signature where we're going to poke. And we have our dots on our uh, cover where we're gonna poke. So now, now we need our pokey tool something to put under our poking. Okay, so I'm gonna do the cover first. Um, really simple. We're just going to take our pokey tool. It's called an awl. This is actually a leather awl I got from Hobby Lobby. It was like $3. Um, and then we're just gonna, where are we at? I'm gonna start at the bottom and go up. We're just gonna find our spot that we made and poke. Okay, so we poked all the way through right there. Now I'm just going to poke back through just so we are going in on this side and not, and we don't have like a bump on this side. So we're going to poke. We're all the way through, we have a hole, and we're just gonna make it bigger and poke that into the other side. And last one. And poke. Okay, so then we have our three holes in back up. In our signature or in our cover so I'm going to set that to the side and grab this so the technique I like to do for poking the, the signatures is actually folding it backwards okay so we're folding it backwards Basically, we just, we're going to open it flat. We're going to open it flat. It's going to kind of wrinkle on you. Because when you close it, it lines up perfectly. So, it's going to have to wrinkle a little bit for us to get our holes in there. So, we're, I'm folding it backwards so that um, all the pages come down to the middle. Um, and I'm just going to poke my holes. And poke, poke, and 
last one, poke. And poke. All right, we have all of them and then just fold them back over. And it is more important that these outside ones are lined up than the inside ones, so this looks good. Okay, so now we can move this out of the way and because we're only doing one signature, um, that's fine. Like we only have to do it once. Okay. So it's going to look like this. We're going to stick it in. Um, I'm only doing a three hole pamphlet stitch. Um, I will eventually be making a, um, a video showing you different kinds of stitching, um, for journals once I figure them out. Um, I did mention previously that I was going to round the corners of my journal. Now I don't know. I asked a couple people which color I should use. And the only answer I got was this yellow. If you can see that, this yellow. Um, but I really can't tell. I kind of want to use a green. Yeah, we'll do the yellow. So the way I measure how much um, embroidery thread that I'll need is three times the spine. So let me unwrap it a little bit. Get off. Um, I have stored this embroidery thread for so long that it like is crinkled. <laughs> getting there. All right. So put one end at the bottom and stretch it out to how far it's going to be. And then put my finger down. That's two. And that's three. So I'm just going to cut a little above there. <clears throat> Did I mention that you're going to need needles because I remember grabbing them but I don't remember like actually telling you about it but you're going to need a big needle. Um, I think they're called donning needles or darning needles or something um, but the, the big eye is important when using embroidery thread um, because it makes it easier to thread your embroidery th thread. So. We're just gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, we're just gonna thread it whoop, just like that. We're not gonna pull it back out. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your signature and your needle and you're gonna go through the center hole. And you may have to like shimmy it around a little bit, but you're just gonna go through the center hole. Can you see my needle? And then you're gonna take your cover and put the center hole on the needle, just like that. And then you're gonna pull through So then you have your tail on the inside and you're going to leave quite a bit there so that you don't pull it out um, while you're finishing your threading. Um, a lot of people try to like put their thumb on it. I'm very bad at that. But okay, so then you're going to find your top hole. And you're going to stick your needle in the top hole. See what I mean? Um, and then you're going to put it, hold on. I have to adjust. So we're in our top hole. You're going to put it into the top hole of your signatures. And again, you may have to shimmy to get them all in there. Try to not poke any new holes. Okay, there we go. We're in. Okay, and then you're going to pull all the way through. And then you're going to skip your middle hole and we're going to go in the, in the last hole, the bottom hole. And going to come out like that. Oh crap. I pulled too high up. Okay. So it came unthreaded. So what you're going to do is you're just going to start over. Middle hole. Middle hole. Okay. Top hole. Oh, 
keeps moving. Top hole, top hole. Okay, and then making sure that this stays, we're gonna skip second, go to the last hole. Okay, we're all the way out. And then we're going to go into the last hole in the cover. Okay, and then pull. Okay. So then we're gonna go back into the middle hole, trying really, really hard not to thread your thread that's already there. So we're in our cover, stop it. Apparently I did not use enough stuff. Okay, hold on. In our cover, can you see in our cover? See right there? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through the cover. Trying really hard not to thread the thread, which I think I already did. And then we're gonna go into the journal. Okay. My paper's curling and that's just because of the clips. So if I were to take them off, they would lay flat. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see. Let's zoom in just a little. Alright, so you can see that they're both on one side of the middle string. What you're going to want to do is stick one on the other side. And you're going to want to pull tight without ripping your pages. Pull tight. And then you're going to tie a knot. Make sure it's tight. Tie another knot. Make sure it's tight. And then I like to go the opposite of what I just tied. And last one. Okay. So then you're going to cut these strings off. I tend to leave them long in the middle of my journal. Um, you don't have to leave them long. You can cut them short. Just don't cut too close to the knot. Um, because then the knot will come out. So there is our our signature. I really need to buy a bone folder. All right, and there we go. I'm gonna take the end of, oh, back up. I'm gonna take the end of my awl and just use it as a bone folder and try to get that to lay down. And then do the same thing on the outside, getting it mostly just to lay down. Okay, so here is our spine. There's our thread. <clears throat> and there it is. We made a journal out of a crown box. That is so cool. I think I'm going to leave my corners like that. Maybe on the next one I'll round the corners, but this. This is cool. I really enjoy this. And I think the coffee dyed paper really adds a cool um, starkness to the white of the inside. Cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification, but the notification bell to be notified when I post again. And I will see you guys in my next video.